Oh, good. Well, good evening. I would like to call this meeting to order at 6 p.m. on Monday, October 12, 2020. Please stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to welcome everyone. I appreciate everyone that's uh, with us this evening. Uh, just a few opening remarks. Uh, this meeting is a meeting of the school board and public for the purpose of conducting the school corporation's business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. There will be time for public participation as indicated on agenda item number four. The mission of Goshen Community Schools is to inspire innovation, empowering potential, enriching our world. And our vision, Goshen Community Schools, Indiana's premier global school district of choice. Moving on to item 1.4, approval of tonight's agenda. Do we have any revisions to the agenda? Yeah. All right. The agenda is approved as presented. And item 1.5, approval of the minutes from the September 8, 2020 special board meeting and the September 14, 2020 regular board meeting. Do we have any revisions to those minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved as presented. Um, I do want to confirm, is board member Roger Knopfsinger online? Yes. Uh, yes, I am. Everyone else is present in the meeting hall. All right, we will move on to item two, which is superintendent's reports and item 2.1, student and staff recognition. So we're going to start this evening with National Merit Semifinalists. There are just four National Merit Semifinalists in Elkhart County. Three of those four attend Goshen High School, which I think is just one more piece of evidence that Goshen High School is delivering a world-class education, preparing students for the world stage. 
So with the following students, come on up. Alexia Potter, Matthew Snyder, and Josh Schrock. Josh is out there. Josh, I'll find you. Come on in. Good job. And then if each one of you would please introduce yourselves and your parents and just tell us a little bit about your future plans. Um, hello, my name is Matthew Snyder. My mom is back there in the nurse's scrubs. And <laughs> my dad is Dave Snyder, who many of you probably know. I will be, I'm planning on studying psychology and potentially attending Yale or Harvard University. Um, my name is Alexia Potter. My parents are George and Natalie Potter, and I want to study math, but I don't know where. Uh, my name is Josh Roth. Uh, my parents are Tim and Steve. My dad's in that. Um, I want to study engineering, but I'm undecided on what to do. Purdue is a great school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, again, uh, three out of the four Elkhart National Merit Semifinalists at Goshen High School. Great job. <laughs> And National Merit Semifinalists and parents, feel free to leave at this time if you like. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much for being here. All right, game changers. I'm going to do a little presentation tonight, and then at the end, I'll follow up with um, some certificates for some committee members for game changers. So. In 2019, Goshen Community Schools applied and received um, applied and received the Patents Accessible Educational Materials Grant. This grant focuses on developing policies and procedures for schools to offer accessible educational materials across all educational environments. The grant team had such a successful year introducing some of the digital tools supplied through the grant that they applied for a second year grant to continue this valuable work. So this time I'm going to ask two spearheads of this grant, Cindy Berger and Terry Clark, to come up and tell us a little bit more about the grant. So we started the grant um, with assembling, assembling a team of um, uh, special ed uh, teachers, gen ed teachers, um, some related service personnel such as myself, some consultants as Sydney Berger is, um, and some administrators technology and technology personnel. personnel. Okay. All right, so this was our first year team. And then, um, like Terry said, we had a diverse group. We wanted to have all um, facets of our Goshen Community Schools represented. In our second year team, is this year we had a lot of repeat team members come back, and we've added a couple new ones. So our focus for the AIM grant, we had three focus um, points. Building capacity for technology use in the classroom resulting in improved student engagement. And what, how we've been doing that is through co-teaching, teaching and collaboration um, with students, paraprofessionals, teachers and administrators. The second focus of our um, AIM grant is reviewing district policies and procedures regarding accessible education materials. So it's just taking what we're already doing really well and fine tuning it and having that language common amongst everybody. So we know where to get materials that students need. And then the third point is collaborating with patents. Um, patents of Indiana uh, maintains a lending library for technology. So schools can um, 
get in touch with them if they're looking at technology before incurring any costs. We can trial that and then see if it's going to work and make student gains. But Patton's role in the AIM grant is they spearhead it. We meet with them bi-weekly or weekly, and they kind of help direct us on what we need to look at for policies and procedures, as well as some of the digital tools that they have afforded us. So as an occupational therapist working in schools, I help teachers teach students who have disabilities. So accessible education material is something that we often look at and presenting it in ways to students who have disabilities so that they can engage in their, in their learning. I think one of the, the best examples of this is if you have a student that has no vision or low vision, of course, you're not gonna expect them to read a book um, in print or even to look at a screen in print. So you might need braille for that student or you might need a screen reader. But we have other students that have other disabilities such as dyslexia who may also benefit from a, a material that's ac accessed in a different way. And then continuing along those lines, accessible education materials just don't have to be for students with special needs. Accessible education materials promote the universal design kind of mindset in classrooms. So it doesn't have to be a high cost technology. It can be a low tech or a high tech. It's just giving students in the classroom what they need in real time when they need it to demonstrate their knowledge. So in our AIM grant, um, we were awarded three digital tools to help this process of educational education materials. So in the assessment realm, they gave us UPAR, which is a wonderful screener that will screen a child's ability to read and comprehend when they read to themselves. It'll also analyze how their comprehension goes up or down if they have a human reader. And then the third way is if they have a digital reader or computer reader, and it gives us a nice printout of if if they read to themselves, what grade level are they reading at? If they have um, a, a computer reader, does it make their understanding go up a couple of grade levels? So it just gives us a lot of data on whether we recommend if that child needs assistive technology. CoWriter is another digital tool, it's an accommodation. This is available for any kiddo in Goshen Community Schools, and it helps with the writing process. If our we have a student in the classroom where handwriting is just a challenge. We can help use CoWriter. It's a smart word prediction um, accommodation, and uh, we've, we've just had a lot of success with that. Snap and Read is an accommodation for reading. It will read materials, but it also will help uh, format outlines and help with the writing process. Each of these tools in a retail um, format would be about $180 per student, but the grant afforded this for any child in Goshen Community Schools. They're covered. If they need it, we can use it. So that's a little bit about the tools, but I guess the best way to describe the grant and the impact that it's had for our children is to show you this short little video. It's about five minutes, and it shows some of these tools in action, what you're looking for is some before and afters of the writing process, as well as words read by students who were just really struggling. And these kids were under the table or maybe out the door. They just, it, just the processes were very frustrating to them. And to see the changes in their lives has been, like I get emotional. It's just, it's been awe-inspiring. So do I just press this? Yes, I'll show you.
I just wanted to kind of give an update with some of the data that it showed at the end, about 70,000 work. Um, we just went on the dashboard today and we are at 102,000 words written and 457,930 words read. So it is making an impact and a change. And in closing, I just put a little packet together as QR codes. It will take you to some of the materials if, if you'd like to take a deeper dive. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much. As she's passing those out, this is just, as you can see, one way in our quest to make sure we're evening the playing field for all of our students. Um, the committee has gone to a lot of work to make this happen for our students. What was probably the most phenomenal thing is it just started by word of mouth. It's like somebody said, I have a kid struggling. Okay, maybe we have something. So I'd send them out and they'd make it happen in the, in the ranks. So it was exciting to see. So this time, I really want to honor the committee members. So I'm going to call their names, and if they will come up, and Mr. Weddle, if you will come and help with the certificates here. We'll have to maintain our social distancing as best as we can here. So Terry Clark. Cindy Berger. Lisa Weaver. Rochelle Fott, Suzanne Mahaja, Mark Perry, Deb Johnson, Lauren Moore, Wendy Hyde, who was a member last year, Tammy Erickson, who joined us this year, Matthew Johns. And Sherry Borg, who recently retired. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your work and all the time that you put in to make this happen. Before you go, though. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> Before you go, Dr. Hope has an award from Patton, so we will present that. This plaque came in the mail from them with regards to the work that you've all done. Take your picture first. Well, big. Yeah. I didn't. We didn't know that. There you go. That's all of this. Thank you, Patton. Patton is on the. They are on the live, and they were unable to come tonight because of the COVID. All right, Cindy and Terry, if you will stay up here, we have okay. We have one more surprise tonight. So stay right where you are, and we'll cue up the video here when Terry is back.
it as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have any questions for the group before they head out? <laughs> no, I mean, I want to thank you all for your, your dedication to this and for moving us ahead. I think that's amazing. You make us all very proud. Anyone? Anyone say anything? <laughs> I think I have you guys on mute, but just to be here. <laughs> Uh, so we'll move on then to item uh, 2.3, which is a discussion about enrollment report. So you have in your board materials enrollment report. So this year, the total for Goshen Community Schools on our official ADM count date was 6, 000, a little over 6,300. Um, this represents a loss of about 200 students from last year. And you look at the totals there from the school, you see most of that loss comes from the elementary schools. Um, following up with some of these parents, a lot of parents are just kind of taking this pandemic year off. So we hope this is an anomaly and that these students will be back with us next year. Do you have any questions? We'll have a new count day in spring. We will. And I'm sure it'll be higher. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Dr. Hope. Uh, Item 2.4, Parent Square. Mr. Snyder. Yeah, so um, I'm excited about this particular program. Um, I don't say that very often, but um, this is a program geared towards schools, for schools, uh, and it can do some amazing things for us. Um, as you have in your memo, uh, you'll notice that it actually can replace quite a few of the programs we already use for communication purposes, and we're excited about the fact that we can consolidate these into uh, this one product. So we all know that informing and engaging our families, uh, our parents, our students is hugely important to education. We want to be a close-knit community, and this is one way to accomplish that. So I'm going to pull up little video for us or try to oh. Can't have it. it helps if I press the right button doesn't it All right. you get it if you want to go ahead oh no can you go ahead and play it it doesn't seem to be our goal is to help you streamline your communication and parent engagement efforts across your schools Parent Square unifies communication for all stakeholders and is 100% parent-centric. That means that everyone is using the same platform, including teachers, principals, staff, admin, even the superintendent. Here, we're logged in as a principal at Lincoln Elementary School. As an admin in Parent Square, I know exactly what's going on at my school and have full access and insight into all school-to-home communication. I can also send out messages to the entire school, or I can send to specific grade levels, classrooms, or groups. We integrate and sync on a nightly basis with your student information system to ensure accurate reach at all times and minimal effort for all users to get started. There are three main ways to communicate in Parent Square: Alerts and notifications, posts, and private chats. Let's start by sending out an emergency alert from the app. Traditional one-way alerts and emergency notifications deliver as phone calls, emails, text, or app notifications. You can also send alerts from the web portal. The second way to communicate in Parent Square is via a post. Sending posts are for day-to-day -day communication, used by teachers for their classroom communication and administrators for school, or district-wide communication. A teacher has access to send messages to their classroom, grade level, and select groups only and roles can be restricted even further. Posts include plenty of different features such as photos and files, links, and item requests. If you're sharing an event, you can quickly add it to your event calendar, which syncs with your existing calendars. You can also request RSVPs, ask for a few volunteers, or even set up online payments. 
You can also send forms electronically through Parent Square. Paper permission slips often end up lost at the bottom of students' backpacks. Ensure your important forms are delivered directly to parents by adding a digital form with optional electronic signature to your post. You can also send out newsletters with our newsletter template option. We build everything in-house, so the look and feel will remain the same whether you use one or all of our add-ons. A post will reach parents via email, text, or app notification, depending on their preference. The third main way to communicate in Parent Square is via private chats, one-to-one -one or one-to-many. Parents can also initiate these private chats if they want to reach their child's teacher. And all communication is done via the private portal or app. Now that everyone at your school or district is using the same communication platform, we can gather statistics for you and help measure not only reach and delivery, but also parent engagement and usage. Also, admins can assign different roles with restricted access, so you know with confidence that your staff are communicating with the right group, class, and grade level at all times. A district account will have super user access available to communicate district-wide alerts and announcements, as well as insight and access to all site communication. In it goes on a little bit, but I decided <laughs> to <laughs> spare you all the details. Um, this, this tool uh, will allow us, as the video uh, has shared, um, to communicate directly and immediately with all of our families. And with our previous system, we could communicate with all of our fa families in a blast, but we all know too that many, many people prefer cell phone text, um, app uh, control, so you can control what kind of notifications come up and such. So we're really trying to enter a more modern way of communicating, which is highly efficient. Um, so we're very excited about this tool. Um, I'll jump over to you. So I consolidated this down to three kind of main points that I wanted you to remember from this, which is this is a tool that allows us to be very comprehensive in our communication. Um, it gives us actionable data so we can actually uh, look at this information and make decisions about this information as well as uh, take action to improve the communication. And really, I, I pulled this, of course, from our vision, but I really feel like it empowers our potential in many ways. So I'll, I'll highlight these here in a second. Uh, comprehensive communication. So again, alerts, posts, messages can all come via apps, text, email, or phone, and it is driven by the parent's preference. So what I really like about this is the parent can choose exactly how they want to get this. They don't have to say, call the school or call call a technical person to say, hey, I want to get these um, as a text and not as a phone call. How do I do that? It's all within the app. Um, safety and security. Mass communication is essential. Quick communication is essential when we have uh, security issues, any issues that involve safety. Um, and this tool will make that very simple to do. We won't have to wonder how to accomplish it. Um, targeted audience. So this tool also allows us to specify which groups of staff, students, parents that we want to communicate with, um, which can be essential not to clutter everyone's uh, email or, or phones with communication that is not pertinent to them. So if we wanted to target fourth grade uh, students at an elementary school, we could do that. If we wanted to target fourth grade students at all schools, we could do that. So it gives us some very uh, flexible ways of communicating that really target that, that person, that those students. Um, parent choice, as I said, uh, two-way communication. Uh, this is really nice. We have some tools out there that allow teachers to communicate with families, with parents, um, but some of them are one way. This tool actually allows the parent to respond via text or through the app, um, making it very easy for them to have that communication. Translation. Uh, I'm very excited about this because I never thought I'd hear this, is that um, Magali, our translator, actually says this application does a really nice job of translating. We've looked at many different translation programs over the years and none of them do very well. She never says that. She never says that. <laughs> I mean, it, it's really impressive. So we're quite excited about that. And I envision a, you know, a teacher can post a message or send a text to a parent. And if that parent has chosen Spanish or some other language 
as their preference, it will translate it for them. So an English speaking teacher and a Spanish speaking parent could have a full on conversation without the need for a translator, which I think is really powerful. Actionable data. So we often find that emails change, phone numbers change, addresses change. Um, how do we keep up with this constant change of our families as they move, as they change uh, plans, um, all kinds of things impact that. This system provides us very clear dashboards on who can we contact, who is being contacted, what information is wrong or, or inaccurate. Um, it allows us to make, uh, we can make efforts to contact the families that are not receiving these, this information and update that information. We know who those individuals are, um, which is a really great way to keep in touch. We know we want to keep in touch with all families. Powering our potential. We want our families to have an increased awareness of educational goals, whether that's related to their students or the school or the district. We want our families engaged in that. Um, and this is a great way to streamline that communication. And we know with better communication comes better relationships, which we know is foundational to educational performance. We want parents to be aware of the activities and services we provide. That is not always clear to parents. There's a lot of communication that goes out there. And if it is not pertinent to me and I get enough of that information or those communications, I might start ignoring so we want parents to be receiving information that's pertinent and relevant to them and try to minimize how much they're getting that is not. And all of this really serves to better student outcomes. So we're excited about this. We're uh, implementing this um, as we speak. Uh, we will have more communication uh, regarding this to staff and to teachers in coming training sessions, um, but look forward to being able to roll this out district wide and have all of our families have a simple and direct way to communicate with the school. Are there questions about this? I'm assuming this is a pretty well tested out platform. Yes, Parent Square is rather large. <laughs> they have quite a few schools. Um, we even had uh, a couple of our staff go down to a um, public relations uh, seminar and Parent Square was pretty much the number one application of choice for anyone in that market. So we first became aware of it when we made a site visit to Perry Township Schools outside of Indianapolis and they just raved about it and then we saw some of the things they were doing with it. Yeah. This will replace the canvas or? Ah, sorry. No, not canvas. Or, um, or sky. Yeah. It's the other one. So, so we have uh, school messenger is what we currently use to broadcast to all families directly, but that's via phone. And then through a somewhat complicated method, they can get it to text them, but it's a little awkward. Um, and that's only one way communication. And it's not very accessible to teachers. So if a teacher wants to communicate with a class, we often see teachers set up either uh, Remind is an application that it would be a competitor to. Um, there's free tools that, that are out there that can do that kind of thing. This provides us a comprehensive tool for the district that allows us to do it at all levels. Um, so a lot of advantages that way. Mm -hmm. This tool will also allow us to quickly survey all of the parents in the district on anything we might want to survey them on and get that feedback immediately. Yeah. Um, I could add that, and it mentioned it in the video, that uh, permission slips. Um, it mentioned that they get lost in, in the bottom of backpacks. Well, yes, that's absolutely true. We all know that. Getting information back can bypass the student having to take it home, remembering where that piece of paper was, and making sure the parent got it, get it signed, returned it, and this will really streamline that process as well. So. Uh, volunteer sign outs. Uh, if you need help with any, you know, field trips or or projects, you can have sign out forms for that as well. There's all kinds of things you can do in there that really do make it more efficient and more uh, easier for the parent to engage with the school. Well, thank you. Really okay.
All right, thanks. And lastly, we'll go to item 2.5, which is an update on our construction project. So we don't have Mr. Gilliam here tonight, but we have Mr. Bush, who was kind enough to be our tour guide earlier tonight, and he'll walk us through the construction updates. All right, good evening. I think we're going to start with the drone video, actually. school workflow goes. Uh, masonry walls will be complete by the end of this month is what we're hoping for. Um, some miscellaneous loose ends here and there. Um, metal capping is just about done on the exterior. The roof is complete. We fully weather tight in, uh, which is good. Painting will continue for a while. Um, they're currently in the fifth grade classrooms right now over on the west side getting paint on the second floor. Uh, as you guys saw, the site concrete is ongoing. We'll keep doing that until weather kind of turns a little worse. So a couple more weeks of that probably. Um, your exterior metal panels are complete. Um, as you can see, grass is growing. We're about 70% seeded. Um, we'll finish the rest out next year when we start doing that tie-in off of 119. Um, ceiling grid uh, has begun. We're actually doing the music area and then your team room is over in your gymnasium right now, um, as are the ceramic tile that has also started. Um, team rooms are just about complete, um, locker rooms, Kind of where we get the bigger bathrooms over in area A. Uh, we got the floor tile down there too, so that's moving pretty good. Uh, we started installing the casework in the band and orchestra area uh, as of this week, and then we've got flooring scheduled for the orchestra music, that kind of wing, 
um, scheduled for uh, November 30th to start mapping that way. So gym equipment shows up next week in the atrium. Um, that'll take about a week, week and a half to get up in the rafters to get that going. And then uh, we were able to get your scoreboards up actually last week. So moving along pretty well. Any questions? I know uh, I wasn't able to take the tour today, but I know some did, and they said it was amazing when it was coming along. So mm -hmm. excited to see it. You can get a lot of great comments on it. Good. Any any challenges ahead that we need to be thinking about? Now at this point, we're we're trying to look as far as we can. So uh, no, at this point, I mean everything that's long lead, I have to order. So that's always a good thing. And then manpower at this point has been pretty good. I would say this project has had fewer, I don't know of any setbacks really that we've had on this at all. Uh, no. It's been a really great project. Mr. Bush is the guy who's there every day and deals with uh, everything we do on a day to day basis. And like everyone on the YGAN team, he's just done an excellent job. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anything else? Very impressive the way as much work as you guys have gotten done in the last three years. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it very yeah. much. Thank you. All right. We will move on to uh, item three of the agenda, which is board committee reports. And we will start with item 3.1, which is parks department. And Mr. Nassinger. Um, We will have a meeting next Monday. Um, so I don't really have any updates at this time. Thank you. Uh, 3.2, which is music council. Mr. Ozzani. Yeah. Yes, uh, I sent uh, uh, the minutes to you via email. I uh, just want to highlight a few things. Um, uh, there is going to be a, a fruit sale and a fundraiser for the Potter Brave. So those are really good things to buy. Uh, one concern I think is one of the concerns that uh, that is not sure it's, it's anybody's fault. It's just the way the system and the budget has changed when the school is no longer uh, require uh, rental fees for instruments. So the music department is still concerned about having insufficient funds to repair and replace instruments. And uh, the uh, marching band is going to have a concert October 15 at the main gym at 7 p.m. So those are the things they want to highlight today. Thank you. And obviously the, uh, the Margie brand has done a couple of parades, <laughs> one downtown and one uh, Green Cross. So that's been enjoyable. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, 3.3 Athletic Council. We did have a meeting and I should hand those things down next week. Okay. And 3.4 Building Trades. Building Trades, uh, the building is moving along. Framing package was delivered. Um, talked with Adam this week. We're probably going to have to have the roof contracted out to make sure that gets done at the appropriate time. So we lost some time in the week before. Okay, thank you. Uh, 3.5 .5, childcare. Uh, no report, but it, um, what's Johnny's last name? Over. Yeah, she's retiring. She might be, and she's a the leader there, so that'd be something we'll be. Uh, happy to talk about at some point, anyway. We have not met. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, Three point six. Ghost Community Schools Foundation. The next meeting is tomorrow. Snow report. They said snow report. Like <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, Three point seven. Legislation. Sorry, nothing yet. Uh, and three point eight. Ghost and redevelopment. We meet tomorrow. Just a couple things on the agenda is uh, potentially a connection to the. Fiddler Pond uh, Park Trail with some larger parts of the city, so that's going to be discussed. So, and 3.9 Equity and Inclusion Council. So we have had six meetings of the Equity and Inclusion Council so far, and at this point, um, we have draft philosophy and purpose statements. Um, so there is a memo attached there that Lori Schreiner wrote. Um, that you can see. And now those statements, while they've been approved internally, we're taking them out to get feedback. So we'll be seeking stakeholder feedback from students and a variety of others. Um, so that will be coming soon. 
I would like to publicly acknowledge the great contributions by Mr. Marino, Ms. Walls, and Mr. Elizalde to this council. They've all done a, a great job. Thank you all for that. All right, we will move on to item number four, which is public comment. So if anyone from the public would like to speak about a non-agenda item, please step forward. Melissa Mitchell, co-president of Goshen Education Association. Since it's not an agenda item tonight, the contract will be coming to you guys soon. And I just wanted to take a moment to publicly thank first the GEA negotiations team. Um, they put in countless hours this year above and beyond to try to figure out some language issues that we were having. And it took a lot of research. And I think this probably is the team that I've been on that has required the most hours of a negotiations team ever. And we thought it was gonna be a fast year. I also just wanted to thank the full committee for staying. Um, it was a late night, the night we finished it. We finished at 11.36 that Wednesday night. And we're sorry for that, but it was very important because we wanted to make sure that we were protecting rights of our teachers, especially our families and making things better for our teachers here. And I know that when we see this, there's always, we can always pay our teachers more and they always deserve more but I am very thankful um, for Dr. Hope's leadership with this as well. He spent some extra hours meeting with Hank and I to try to nail out some language. And there were some things he did not have to give on because it was an after the understanding just to make sure that it was clear to not only us, but also future people who are reading our contract. And I just really respect that he was watching out for the teachers and I wanted to publicly thank him for doing that and watching out for our best interests. And I would also like to public acknowledge the GA was a pleasure to work with. Just a great partnership, great collaboration. The student teacher relationship is at the center of everything we do in Gudgeon Community Schools. And we have to make sure that we have all the resources we need there supporting uh, the teachers. And, and we will continue to work on making sure the Gudgeon teachers are the highest paid. You know, for them. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? All right. Uh, we'll move on to item number five, which is our consent agenda items. Item 5.1, checks number 36978 through 37249, 305760 through 305799, 1241 through 1279, 60325 through 60331, 1039, and 2048 through 2052, and EFT's number 519736 through 521971, 355 through 389, 4772 through 4774, and 1245. 5.2, elementary school improvement plans. 5.3, secondary school improvement plans. 5.4, renewal of agreement with NIET. 5.5, renewal of updated agreement with Elkhart Area Career Center. And item 5.6, personnel. Do we have any revisions to the consent agenda items? And hearing none, the consent agenda items are approved as presented. All right, moving on to item six, uh, action items. Uh, item 6.1 is adoption of the 2020 budget, including the following funds, referendum fund, rainy day, debt service, referendum debt fund, education and operations, and adoption of resolution 761 for 2021 appropriations and tax rates. Ms. Kitchen. Good evening. I apologize. I have no exciting drone videos. <laughs> um, so we are asking you tonight to adopt the uh, proposed tax rate and budget uh, um, form four. Uh, so the proposed tax rate for the operations referendum is the 26 cents. The rainy day, of course, does not have a tax rate. Uh, the debt service is 47 by 2.4752 cents, referendum debt 0.4218, uh, education fund of course does not have a tax rate, 
In the education fund, it is important to note that that budget does not include the transfers to operations. That is not a budgeted expense that's on top of that. And the operations fund at 0.5915. Uh, if you recall, the assessed valuation is an estimate at this point, and this uh, will go to the Department of Local Government Finance for final approval of the proposed tax rate and budget. Questions, I guess, to Ms. Kitchen about what is being proposed. All right, do we have a motion, please? It's been moved. With a second, please. Second. Okay. From the board, please. All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed say nay. Passes unanimously. Yeah, don't, don't be messed with me. <laughs> That's not funny. Uh, passes 7-0. Uh, all right, uh, moving on to item 6.2, which is adoption of resolution number 762, 2021 resolution through 2020 budget appropriation reduction. So we're asking the board to approve the uh, ability for the business office to reduce appropriations as necessary, uh, particularly the transfer that we are making uh, from education operations in 2020 and bring back those numbers for final approval by February 28th of 2021. This will allow us to access additional dollars of our cash balance for budget next year uh, due to the decline in enrollment. Any questions for Ms. Kitchen? All right, do I have a motion, please? I move that we adopt resolution number uh, 762. It has been moved and seconded. Any additional comments from the board? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. <laughs> Passes seven to zero. Thank you. Um, item 6.3 is adoption of resolution number 763, budget year transfer from educational to operations. As you would call uh, the transfer from education is that portion of the former general fund that is used for operational expenses. We have reduced that uh, by 40% for the 2021 uh, budget and we are asking for a $360,000 monthly transfer uh, for a total of just uh, under 4.3 million for the year. All right, any questions? All right, we have a motion, please. Then move, we have a second. Second. And seconded, any additional uh, comments from the board? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Passes seven to zero. Thank you. Item 6.4, adoption of resolution number 764, CPF fund plan. Um, although we no longer have a capital projects, uh, we are still a fund, dedicated fund, we are still required to adopt a capital projects plan uh, that would fall into the operations. Uh, in the budget hearing, we presented that uh, for a few uh, purchases and smaller projects. Uh, so we're asking you to adopt the resolution to allow us to proceed with that plan. Any questions? Do I have a motion, please? Second. It has been moved and seconded. Any additional comments from the board? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We'll say nay. Passes seven to zero. And item 6.5, adoption of resolution number 765, bus fund plan. Again, we no longer have a specific bus fund plan that's part of the operations, uh, but we ask you to uh, uh, adopt our seven-year plan, and we will replace uh, the most critical bus items, and we'll bring those back uh, to the board uh, prior to the budget hearing back in June, if you remember the board uh, allowed us to pursue the idea of leasing buses in order to free up capital within that plan. 
Any questions? All right, do I have a motion, please? Move to adopt our consensus and Second, please. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any additional comments from the board? All right, all those in favor, please say hi. Aye. 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 We'll say nay. Passes seven to zero. Thank you very much, Ms. Kitchen. All right, uh, we will now move on to item seven, which are discussion items. And we will start with item 7.1, which is uh, Goshen Middle School renovations. Dr. Cole. So if you recall from our last board meeting, we had a superintendent's report that went over these renovations. I'm just gonna go over those renovations again for you this evening. Thank you, Moshe. And there's the entire site plan of Goshen Middle School. So we're looking at how can we efficiently use all of the buildings within Goshen Community Schools, um, get an actual revenue enhancement through that, just uh, being more efficient with every, every building that we have and adding some programming. The current clinic is across the parking lot in the warehouse and we would move the clinic then to a new space, newly renovated. Um, this would make the clinic close to the seven, eight school, five, six school and model elementary. So we have uh, a good population of teachers, staff who use the clinic very close to the clinic. And not too far away for everyone else. So this will include exam rooms, a new mental health space, which we currently do not have, a lab and then storage. We want to continue and uh, boost our wellness program um, so that we are providing um, as much wellness as we can within the Goshen Community Schools. That's always the savings. Um, add mental health services. This will also give additional parking. Parking is really tight for the clinic right now and it will be a central location. The Elkhart Community Special Education Collaborative will also move out of Lindway Plaza and into the, the 7 8 school. And you see the green areas there are for the ex -Sec offices, including a reception area, conference room, a teacher work area, lots of file space. So with special, special education comes a lot of files. Um, and you see on the left-hand part of the screen, you see a room full of little boxes. Those are files. <laughs> Lots of them. We will have an immediate savings once we move out of Little Lake Plaza. Also, it's a savings in custodial fees, insurance, and overhead. And we'll just give XSEC a much more updated modern space. Head Start will move out of Merritt Learning Center and into the 7 8 building. And this will include three classrooms, an office, and a playground. And they'll move out of the modular at Merritt. Um, this will get a bathroom changing space in every classroom, uh, greater safety and security. And just note, Head Start provides all of the furnishings and the playground for this. It's no cost to Goshen Community Schools. And then Merritt um, Alternative School will move from their current location at the old Riverdale Elementary to the 7 8 school and have more modern classrooms and dedicated cafeteria. <coughs> and then the prep kitchen. Um, will also be installed. This will serve the entire district, um, which will give us fresher food, less processed food, uh, which will also be a savings. And we will start a culinary arts program and a restaurant management program, which should enhance revenue for Goshen Community Schools. Any questions? What has been the, sorry, what has been the feedback from administrators, teachers, staff, so by and large, everybody's always afraid to change or, or just apprehensive about change. So we've included all uh, merit in the 7-8 school, everybody in here. So we planned out where everybody can be. Um, so it's just a matter of going through those motions. Um, it's just, it's going to be a huge cost savings to Goshen Community Schools. 
and a much more efficient program. <clears throat> and I think once everybody's there, um, they'll be excited about the new space. What is the potential timeline for this? If it is approved and moves forward, when would it start and when would it so construction renovation would start immediately after the last day of school this year and then continue on um, into the start of the next school year, but be finished pretty quickly um, before Thanksgiving. It's not a lot of work. It's just a uh, moving around. So it's not a lot of actual construction involved. Will the, uh, the temporary classrooms be removed uh, or currently Yes, so there are currently two uh, modulars outside of Goshen Middle School. Those will be removed. And those were rented, correct? Or um, that, I don't know. The bottom uh, steel from Northridge, didn't we? Yeah. Mrs. Kitchen, the portables at the middle school, did we purchase those? Uh, we purchased them from Northridge. Okay. Yeah. So we'll uh, probably go through the surplus process and see someone else would like them. And then And is the intention that we would use the same process that we've done for the high school and for the intermediate with YGAN, or would we have to do another RFP? Um, no, we will continue that with YGAN. I don't know, Miss Kitchen, if you want to add anything to that. Uh, if you recall, part of the referendum was all of the different facilities that you didn't include in the investments for middle school. And uh, because our referendum bond sale was so successful with the lower middle school, then we'll take kind of our and rest of the budget dollars to put towards the middle school after satisfying all the needs for the intermediate class. So there'll also be just a freshen up of the 7 8 school with new paint and some new furniture as well. I'm assuming it's been one like year and upgrade on um, green. Green uh, energy as well, like lights, stuff like that. So there are some enhancements there. The yes, will um, change out the lighting. Heating HVAC will be much more efficient than it is now. Uh, Mrs. Kitchen, I believe the middle school has one of the oldest HVAC systems in the district. Yes, we do, and uh, we'll be I know it's not part of this immediate project, but obviously with drop off and pick up, we will monitor it after we remove a third of the students theory out, but is there still some potential improvements in the near term <laughs> or for the whole flow? Because it's, people got their hands full uh, trying to orchestrate all that each and every day. Yes, we'll come back to you with a plan for that. Um, the city is actually ask, asking us to move the drive. Um, so we'll come back with a plan for that. It will be much improved. Having one less grade there will help, yeah. but we can still improve on that. Okay, thank you. Um, and then we'll go to item 7.2, a recommended board policy update. So the policy committee met, and then Ms. Martin and I met with Ms. Slavens from the ISBA and went over all of those policies. So there are the updated recommended policies. So we, I mean, we uh, the board, we've had a small meeting on that. So, I mean, I would encourage the other board members to kind of review those. I mean, there's just a lot of language cleanup uh, from things that may have been redundant or just some more clarification that we need to do. So I'd say, you know, board members, please just look at those and just make sure they're clear. Okay. 
All right, so we will move on to item eight, which is now closing items. Um, 8.1, any miscellaneous items from the board tonight? All right, uh, 8.2, miscellaneous administrative items. Um, I would just like to encourage everybody in our community to continue to wear masks, continue to keep physical distance, continue to wash your hands thoroughly, often, and then keep a small social bubble. I think as most of you know, the number of COVID cases has really skyrocketed here in Elkhart County. The number of hospitalizations has also gone up. Um, the number of COVID cases in Goshen Community Schools has stayed relatively the same since the start of school, although we are quarantining more students in the last few weeks than we have previously. Um, so we just wanna help keep the entire community safe. We need everybody's help to do this. So continue to follow those protocols. Appreciate that, Dr. Hope. Um, and then 8.3 is adjournment. Do I have a motion, please? We move. The second, I'll bear, please say hi. Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Uh, the board will recess for about 